sleepy little summer side. Yes, we did the sights. Apparently, we did miss a couple, uh, we were told, which went with something. I'm not that disappointed. So, uh, anyways, yeah, it's a, if you want a peaceful town, this would be it. Very peaceful. Dead-like. <laughs> so, we're on our way back to get over to the bridge and uh, cross back over. And we're on our way to St. John, New Brunswick, which, according to the GPS, it's not that big a trip, long a trip, only two and a half hours, three hours, less than three hours, actually, if that thing is accurate. Um, so we're going to be there pretty early. Um, and I guess we'll see what we'll see in St. John. At this point, really, in the trip, I'm just... Kind of winding down and... Yeah. Kind of beginning to look forward to getting home. Yeah. But we might as well do St. John while we're here. Yep. Um, so anyways, yeah, I'm getting a little tripped out. It was a little bit more difficult to get out of bed this morning. Of course, that's part of the problem was I didn't sleep all that well last night because I did not find that bed very comfortable. Oh, I thought it was nice and comfortable. Of course you did. <laughs> Of course he did. My bed was nice again. Oh, that's nice. I think they did have one of those uh, foam mattresses, you know, and it was pretty dense. Um, I just couldn't get in a comfortable position, but whatever, that's fine. So we had brekkie at the hotel. Um, they actually had a decent uh, breakfast was included with the room. Um, you know, we had scrambled eggs, you had bacon, they had breakfast burritos, which were kind of nice. Um, they had French toast, they had cinnamon buns, or cinnamon rolls, I guess, and um, juice and everything, so yeah, that was okay, and nothing more to say, <laughs> so I'll tune in later. See in the distance, of course there's trees in the way of the road. should take too long to get started. Okay, of course you just be quiet, and uh, it's difficult to get it in the shot. But the bridge is over yeah, there. I got clearing coming up, so. Yes, yeah, so clearing coming up here. We should get a better view of it, hopefully. Can't see the bridge for the trees. Okay, so over here, coming up. There it is. There, you see it in the distance. Gonna hold this steady. And there it is over there. Okay, that's the bridge we're going across. And it's eight miles long, as I think we said before. Now I know there's a bunch of you out there that have been saying, oh my god, you have to pay that much? I wouldn't be taking the bridge. Well, there's an answer for that. Yeah, it costs over 50 bucks to go over the bridge. That's two ways. You only pay it once, so say $25 a time, okay? Um, what's your alternative? You can take the ferry, but it's $160 return. Yeah, so this is the cheaper way to go and probably the faster way because the ferry is no good. You have to book the ferry. You have to wait for the ferry. You have to load your car onto the ferry. It takes an hour and a half to get across from all the ferries. So. Now, I think that in all fairness, that comment came from somebody who doesn't live in Canada. I think from over in England, actually. And yeah, it's a little different here <laughs> because this is an eight mile bridge. All right. Um, it's just not a hop, skip, and a jump kind of a thing. And I don't imagine that over in England, I don't know if there's anywhere in Europe that they have a bridge this long uh, kind of a thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I can understand why you would think, wow, just going over a bridge is going to take you like a minute to cross, cost you 50 bucks. Well, no, it's eight miles on that. Just to clarify that point, there is an alternative method, like Walter said, the ferry, or you could swim. Okay, <laughs> I don't recommend the swimming part. So we're on the bridge, and you've seen shots like this before when we came over. Now this is going back. And see on the side. Water, water everywhere. I read somewhere though. That uh, the deepest point between the two uh, sides is around 200 feet deep, mm -hmm. and that uh, average was around 63 feet deep. Well, that's probably why they built the bridge here. Yeah. 
shortest distance between the two across the water. Yeah. So, so eight miles. Yeah. Another view of the bridge. It's a little bit hazy, foggy, might even be smoky. I don't know. Uh, right now, which is towards going to the and towards New Brunswick, New Brunswick side of the bridge. So we've been stopped here on the road because they're stringing a new line across it, uh, the hydro guys. This is what my father used to do for many, many years. He was a journeyman lineman. That's what those guys are too, are journeyman linemen. And they climbed the pole with uh, spurs. My dad had a set of spurs. I remember growing up as a kid watching my dad do exactly this kind of job, climbing the pole and they're putting these big clamp things on there right now. And what those clamp things do is they wrap around uh, on the side of the pole and then they grab, they grip the wire. And in order to get the tautness in the wire, you can't do it just by your own muscle strength itself. So these act sort of like a block and tackle pulley. And there's a handle on them. You can see one at the top there that's down and they sort of crank that in. And uh, now what he's doing is he's taken the temporary line that pulled the actual main wire across and they've loosened that off. So you see that's called a stringer that they pull across. And that's how you get the wire uh, across there too. Because that wire is very, very heavy. Um, it doesn't look like much when you see it from this point of view, but it's very heavy and then they'll anchor it into the pole and they'll attach all that wire to insulators and whatnot and eventually be hooked up to the main line for electricity. Didn't think I knew this, did you? Well, that's what I get for growing up in a household where my father was a journeyman lineman. So we've been stopped here on the road because they're stringing a new line across it. Uh, the hydro guys. This is what my father used to do for many, many years. He was a journeyman lineman. That's what those guys are too, are journeyman linemen. And they climbed the pole with uh, spurs. My dad had a set of spurs. I remember growing up as a kid watching my dad do exactly this kind of job, climbing the pole. And they're putting these big clamp things on there right now. And what those clamp things do is they wrap around uh, on the side of the pole and then they grab, they grip the wire and in order to get the tautness in the wire, you can't do it just by your own muscle strength itself. So these act sort of like a block and tackle pulley and there's a handle on them. You can see one at the top there that's down and they sort of crank that in. And uh, now what he's doing is he's taken the temporary line that pulled the actual main wire across and they've loosened that off. So you see that's called a stringer that they pull across. And that's how you get the wire uh, across there too. Because that wire is very, very heavy. Um, it doesn't look like much when you see it from this point of view, but it's very heavy. And then they'll anchor it into the pole and they'll attach all that wire to insulators and whatnot and eventually be hooked up to the main line for electricity. Didn't think I knew this, did you? Well, that's what I get for growing up in a household where my father was a journeyman lineman. Okay, I'm trying to capture a picture of lupins and it's hard to do because there was all kinds of these things all along the road just a few minutes ago. So I decided to get out the camera and take a picture of them. And guess what? The lupins are gone, but we were told that there's, there's a bunch of lupins. Of course, we're going pretty fast, so I don't know if you saw the lupins. Oops. Hey, lupins up here, looking for the evasive lupin. Anyways, they're very pretty little plants, and they grow along the side of the road, lots of them. Uh, we were told Prince Edward Island that uh, they grow there profusely. And so if you see anything sticking its little head up that looks purplish, 
That's purple probably. Purple and pink. Purple and pink. That's probably a lupin. There's some. There, I can't get over there outside fast enough. Any lupins over here? No, well, you can't see them because the cars are just past town, a, a ton of them, and then yeah. Steve gets the camera out and it's gone. I bet you as soon as he turns the camera off, we'll see all the I know, that's what I figured. Around the corner here. Are there lupins around the corner? Oh, they're pretty. Lupins! Oh look, up here. Those are lupins. There you go. I've got a picture of lupins. And we have arrived in St. John, New Brunswick. There you can see the city. Possibly using the word city loosely. Not sure. thoughts from some people in this area about St. John, so we may not have really needed two nights here, but we've got two nights here, so yeah, we'll be arrested for the big drive back home. Take exit 123, yeah. on the right, toward Highway 100. Okay, so the uh, bitch here on the GPS is yapping her mouth off. So we've arrived in St. John, and here's looking at the harbor. And this is from the second, third, or fifth floor. I don't know how high up we are of the uh, hotel we're in at the Delta. Well, according to them, we're on the second floor, but, but I, I think we're higher than that. <laughs> well, I think it's because it's on top of the Brunswick Center or something. It looks like a shopping mall down there. Do you know? Mm, I don't remember much. Impressive. I don't remember much from the time we were here before. Yeah. Years ago, but. Maybe a reason for that. Could be. Could be. So we'll we're on the streets of St. John. <laughs> We've got ourselves settled into our hotel room and now we're just taking a leisurely walk amongst the streets here to see what we shall see. We're down here. No, not really. I'm not pedaling that many. Well, do you want to know if I want to go for a bike ride? Well, we'd have to get about 18 more of our friends on this. Hey, idiot Coulter bike ride meetup. <laughs> Waterfront Container Village is where we are at the moment. It looks like they've taken all these containers and have made them into little stores and shops and retail. There's your beaver tails. We want a beaver tail. Right around the corner. We saw something like this when we were in Auckland. They had. Uh, all of these kind of things. Oh, no, 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 that was Auckland. It was England, wasn't it? No, no, it was in, um, what's the uh, part of uh, New Zealand that had the big uh, church, church? Oh, Christchurch. Christchurch. Was that in Christchurch? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was in Christchurch where we saw this. So we're going to explore this area. Okay. So here's Walter eating a beaver. Beaver tail. Okay, sorry. <laughs> One or the other. Yeah, beaver tail. He got a classic, which is just sugar on top of the dough. Cinnamon and sugar. I got the banana rama with hazelnut spread, Nutella like, and bananas. And this looks like it's going to be very, very messy. Okay. So we just popped into the information center here in Pod City, Canister, Container City, I guess it's called. We're just walking around here now and seeing what else is in here. Lots of little stores, lots of little kitschy things, I guess. There's lots of shopping for you down here. As usual, there's always lots of shopping for ladies. Here's some more of the stores in this area. Was that cheese stick? Place. So popcorn. Yeah. Junk food place. Sugar spider. Meltdown. Nut and fudge. Nut and fudge. And some more shots of them here. 
shot of Walther in a container. Big mural over on this one. Of course, they have electric scooters for rent. They're everywhere. Oh, and look, they have one of those things where you put a lock up. You know, the, the secret to that is if you're not really sure it's going to be forever, put on a combination lock. Don't put it on and throw the key away. And don't throw a key away. And they have a entertainment venue here as well. Looks like it's some sort of a fundraiser for big brothers and sisters. Another section of uh, St. John. This is kind of the area where there's lots of restaurants seem to be, or pubs anyways, down here. Um, children on e-bikes trying to run us over. No big deal. So that gives you a sense of what we're seeing. This is right down on the waterfront area. The port over here, which is hard to really see. It's not that much to see. It's kind of an it industrial like, port. It's kind of redeveloping this area. Yeah, they could be redeveloping this area. It looks like they've got all kinds of ideas happening. Someday, maybe. This is the Market Square sort of mall food place. Not really a whole lot in here. We think this place was here when we were here 39 years ago. And this is the upper level. You can see that it's really quite you know, barren. Okay, see this sign? St. John, the city of adventure. Not really sure of what adventure there is. Here, I'll, I'll give you an example of what I mean. Look at this face. Does this say adventure? No, not really. Okay. <laughs> There you go. This kind of epitomizes St. John, I think. The best thing you can do here is <laughs> feed your pigeon. This is somewhat progressive. Ah, see, look at their hands. Nope, only on one. That's the wrong hand, anyways. Yeah, these are the statues we saw 39 years ago when we were here, but they were outside. So it looks like they relocated them inside now. There you go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We are in St. John, and we have met up with uh, with Heidi. As I like to say, Heidi Ho. But you guys know Heidi because she's a regular on the channel. She's a regular on the So Days and everything. And Heidi doesn't live too far away from here either. So she's come downtown to meet up with us. Uh, it's sort of a mini meet and greet, you might say. We're going to have a couple of drinks. And uh, yeah, we'll enjoy her company. So Heidi recommended this place uh so we're, if we don't like it we're gonna blame you uh, <laughs> and we'll make sure everybody knows that and i'm sure heidi will tell us other things about the area as we go along here and everything but anyways it's really nice to meet you heidi and heidi brought us some nice baked goods as well which i know we're going to enjoy and yeah so it's so nice to see you <laughs> yeah now in person you actually have a body with you Usually, see just you know Everybody all of our so different. we're all bod headless, uh, bodiless heads on uh, the zooms and on YouTube. So. How do I work the sewing machine with no foot? True. Well, that's your problem. <laughs> so we went out for dinner tonight, and we went for Indian again. Um, we went to a place that sort of had Indian, it had Chinese, and it had steaks and all kinds of stuff like this kind of a more high-end sort of place. The food was good, um, but it was missing something. It was just missing something. 
It wasn't as good as the place we went to in Halifax with Stephanie. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's what we've, so what have we done the rest of today? Well, you met Heidi. Uh, most of you know who Heidi is. She lives in this area, in New Brunswick. And uh, we met up, had a uh, drink with her. She brought us some wonderful cookies. Already had a couple of them and some jam, homemade wild strawberry jam. It says on the jar, I can't wait to try that, but I'll wait till we get home. And now we're back at the hotel room and we're just taking it easy. I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow because we've done it all. <laughs> but yes, I'm not making, I'm not exaggerating this. Okay, people? Uh, it is. And we have noticed, we could be wrong about this, but there's a different atmosphere in St. John's, in St. John, than there is in Halifax and Charlottetown and uh, Fredericton and that. We found, for the most part, everywhere we've been, except here, the people friendly. Like, more friendly than we're used to. Like, Well, they were friendly, they're friendly in the hotel, but they're not as friendly in the restaurants. No. In fact, they have a bit of an attitude. Um... And they shouldn't, believe me. <laughs> um, and I hate, at, at the risk of selling like I have an attitude, this is not Toronto, okay? It's not even close uh, with that. And I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing because, you know, Toronto is Toronto. It's like, whatever. But just, I don't know, just a little different atmosphere is all, I guess. So anyways, we're not sure what we're doing tomorrow because, as I said, we've done it all. So we're maybe take very leisurely tomorrow because the next day we're on our way heading back home and it's going to be a long drive, two days of long driving because basically we have to go from uh, St. John to Quebec to St. Foy, which is a, a suburb of uh, Quebec where Walter got the room. And we're not going there to look around or do anything like that because we've already been there, done that. We just want to get home. And uh, what do you reckon that the uh, drive from here to St. Foy is? Well, it's six hours and something, six and a half hours. Oh, I was thinking it was about eight. No, well, I don't think so. Okay. Well, actually, though, when we go from St. Foy to back to Oshawa, that one's longer then. Yeah. That's a longer drive. That's more like eight. So, yeah. So, we have to rest up for all of that. So, yeah. More tomorrow.